Melvordians like nothing better than to watch the flicks. The stars come out in more ways than one, entertaining the crowds with Hollywood glamour and gay joy de vivre. Popcorn, the revolutionary new snack from our cousins across the waves, delights young and old. A nutritious and welcome repast for our hungry film fans. Newsflash! Strange heavenly bodies have been spotted hurtling through the evening skies, and they're headed straight for us. Scientists say there's nothing to panic about, and recommend plenty of visual and oral stimulation. So, if you're feeling a little queer, we recommend that you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Film time here in Melbourne. I'm Stephen Bullfield. I'm here with um, Lisa, Lisa Daniel and uh, Claire Jackson from the Queer Film Festival of Melbourne. Um, what's big in the festival this year? What can we look forward to? We've got 14 features, Stephen, so we have to narrow it down to around about uh, all 14 are very good. Uh, one of the highlights is Shooting Porn. That's uh, a behind the, hit, the behind the scenes expose on California's gay porn industry. Very explicit, but very funny. Uh, our opening night film, of course, Relax, It's Just Six. Uh, it's a cliche, but there is something for everyone in that. Uh, bisexuals, uh, straights, uh, gays, lesbians, it's a really good film. Great, great sort of selection for opening night. Uh, Everything Will Be Fine is a, a lesbian feature which uh, is really highly regarded by the, pa the, the programming panel, so uh, I think that'll go down well. Uh, Out of Season is another lesbian feature that uh, is showing on the last Saturday of the festival. A very good film. Uh, the Real Alan Story. Uh, it's a documentary about the behind the scenes, uh, sort of leading up to the coming out episode of Alan. How many films you have on, on one night? Uh, we have about three sessions a night, it averages out to, so that would be you have a short film and a feature. We also have packages of, um, of short films, international shorts. We've got the Dirty Dyke lesbian erotica package. Uh, and they might be, say, and these Australian short films as well. So there might be about 10 films, 10 short films in a session. So they're great and they're very popular. And a lot of your films are international foreign language films that, and presumably they're subtitles. And what can you say, because I know some viewers find subtitles a bit, you know, a bit of an off-putting thing. What can you say to viewers about, you know, the, the fact that they can really watch a film with subtitles? Um, I don't see a problem with this, the subtitling of the films. Uh, actually, one of the films we have is uh, sort of English with English subtitles. straight customers coming along? Um, definitely we get we get some straight people. There's there's some films um, that are of great value uh, to a general film going audience or an audience that are really interested in films such as um, East Palace, West Palace which is a Chinese feature film um, made under great difficulty in China and the... Um, made, made um, in secret without the body knowing about it, yeah? Yes, and actually the, 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 I believe the director's under house arrest at the moment. So, uh, it, it, and it's, it's a, a very significant film and a great interest to more than just people in the queer community. And um, what's, the, what's the final, sort of the closing night going to be like? What's on the closing night? Uh, we're showing Hamam the Turkish Bath, which is uh, fantastic to have in the festival. It was quite difficult to get. Um, it's coming up on World Movies pretty soon, I think, but uh, that's subtitled as, as well. Uh, it's great to have because it was the official selection for uh, Best Foreign Film in the Academy Awards, but was pulled by the Turkish government. In the news last week, um, uh, Ian McKellen is in trouble with some distributors in Australia because of a film that he was trying to distribute here that was said to be uncommercial, which is what the distributors usually say when they mean it's too gay. But, uh, so I, I wanted to ask you, um, why do we need a queer film? Well, I suppose the, the reasons that we've just brought up then is that a lot of um, films don't surface to a general audience. Uh, they don't get commercial release. They're not looked at by commercial distributors. 
And also there's a lot of short independent films that don't get a Guernsey anywhere else that are made by queer filmmakers. And this is a really important forum for those people to show their work. Yes, because the, the, the filmmakers, um, budding filmmakers and young gay and lesbian filmmakers will have to, you know, chat around for money to make their films. And your festival is one of the ways that they can get support and distribution and get their films shown. So buying tickets to the Queer Film Festival is supporting the queer film industry, ladies and gentlemen. Your opening film is relaxed, it's just sex, you know, sex is no big deal. I mean, how does sex feature a lot in the festival? Uh, yes, it does. There's a number of uh, films that are uh, shooting porn, being the documentary. Um, yeah, I, I think this year there's, there's a lot of sex and I think uh, it's going to be good and particularly in some short films. A lot of fun. Well, you don't need sex to make a good gay film, do you? No, you don't. Uh, it's always handy. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty saucy film festival, but uh, nothing ridiculously over the top. Uh, it's all in fun, and uh, I don't think we're going to accept any sense. But we'd like to. <laughs> we try. Well, the festival is running from the 19th to the 20th days at City Media, but the opening night is at the National Theatre in St. Kilda, the big dollar opening night. Tickets are on sale now. Here's the night in the bookshop. featuring the festival in uh, our future programs whilst the festival is going ahead. Now you're looking stunning as always, Lee. Thank you very much. It's uh, an incredible outfit. How would you describe this particular um, outfit? Well, it's a rather, I guess, it's an angular geometric print with a scattering of sequins, a few thousand sequins. And I've gone for an A-line tonight and I've teamed it with these rather interesting pink tights. And oh, I've gone through the knee nice. falling over. Yeah, very much, have. yeah. I mean, the d diversity of his work, uh, both in costume, both um, in performance, installation, um, music, dancing with Michael Clark. I think very much an artist, yeah. Let's, let's take a walk and have a look at some of the stuff around. Now, um, just for some of those people who don't know, I mean, who was Lee Barry? Uh, Lee Barry was born in Melbourne. Um, uh, he lived here until he was 19 when he left for London. He grew up in Sunshine, went to Melbourne High School, where he got a scholarship, and uh, he died uh, of AIDS in London in 1994. He's been uh, variously des described as a uh, nightclub sensation. He ran uh, Two, which was probably the seminal nightclub of the 80s. Um, performance artist, uh, costume designer, singer. He was a range of things. Lee was initially drawn to the scene in England through the popular, uh, uh, popular culture magazines such as ID and the Blitz magazines, which, of course, very clearly um, gave um, photographic uh, representation of what was going on in the, in the city at the time. So it was a draw for him. And then not very long after that, though, those ma uh, magazines made him famous. Because you know, there, was, there was an interesting quote that you, you mentioned before about what it was like to be Australian in London in the mid 80s or the early 80s. I read that Johnny Shan Kidd, who was a photographer at the time, said of Lee that Lee coming from Australia in the 80s was slightly more horrendous than coming from Canada. that Lee um, perhaps wasn't that interested in defining gender. I think that he was interested in um, the, the form of the body and extending the form of the body. So it, it was non-gender specific, and whether they're he's hidden his manlyhood or not is sort of secondary. Lee's work seems to be as a... Um an, uh, well, an outcry, I mean, it's a bit of a dramatic word, but it's basically a criticism of, of the whole sort of body fascism thing, and that's early 80s already. I mean, what do you think about that? Absolutely. I mean, I think that uh, gay culture is very brutal, and I think that um, Lee was embarrassed by his visual, um, both facial and body, and I think to uh, gain attention or to be recognised, um, the costume manifest itself into something and um, that was his guys that was his power. History runs around. 
It's kind of an indeterminate accent. It's not, it's not London, it's not necessarily English. Where are you from? I'm actually from a suburb in Australia, and the name of the suburb, if you're interested, is Sunshine. Sunshine, Australia. Yes, that's actually my passport, Jonathan. What a lovely place. Uh, are, there, are there a lot of people like you in Sunshine, Australia? Are you? Uh, I'm not completely sure. Um, I think I might be... I think I'm one in a million. Well, these quiet. images of Lee um, coming out, and he'd come out dressed like that, dance, gyrate, and then start screaming and lay on the table and then he'd finally give birth to Nicola who would um, be naked and dripping in blood and so forth. Quite dramatic. Uh,